it's hard. It's not something I thought I would see in all of my years as a nurse. I've been here for quite a few years and the things we're seeing now is not anything I ever expected. Um, you know, death and dying are a part of nursing, unfortunately, but not to this extent. I mean, this is just extreme right now. Try to do the best for your patients, always. I mean, nobody's going to teach you this in nursing school, ever, nowhere. <laughs> Nobody can prepare you for this. In the emergency room, we're packed full. I mean, um, there are days when there are 20, 30 people out in the lobby waiting for a bed. We are trying our best. We're trying our best to prioritize the patients who need to be seen. These patients, gosh, you get attached to them because they are here for so long. Um, you get attached to their families because once they're not able to speak for themselves anymore, then we're the ones who are speaking and communicating to their families for them. Um, so it's not just patient care, it's whole family care that we're doing. It's hard on families because they can't be here. They don't always understand what's happening or what we're doing and they can't come visit their loved ones. And we're an area where we like to be with our family. So that's horrible. And then trying to explain to someone over the phone how things is going, as great a job as we do, you still can't convey to them everything that's going on. It's, it's difficult not to be able to let them in and visit their loved ones. With this surge, um, the patients are typically younger. So you've not had this conversation with your family members yet. You know, I'm 43 years old. I've not really had that kind of a conversation with my husband. Should I be on the ventilator for X amount of time? Would I, when would I want to come off of it? Or when would we want to transition to comfort care? Um, these are the talks that we're having with families right now that are hard. You know, they're having to make the decision and having feel like they have the world on their shoulders trying to make that decision. Um, unfortunately, <sighs> we're not seeing them come off the ventilator to live life afterwards. Uh, after they've been wrecked with COVID. People are not getting vaccinated for COVID and not social distancing and not wearing their mask and they're coming in sicker than I've ever seen before. It's emotionally draining when you see people that are young and you know that would have lived a full life if they just made a different decision and maybe would have got the vaccine or people that look at you and they're smothering essentially and they, want, they literally say, I, if I could have done anything different, I would have got the vaccine. At least. 95% of my patients that walk out of here or sadly that don't make it have said to me, I wish that I would have gotten vaccinated. I think that we should trust science a little more than we are and not and just stop making it so political because it is killing people. I think at last check, like 92% of our patients are unvaccinated. Um, and the big difference between vaccinated and unvaccinated, if I can elaborate, is our vaccinated patients typically go home in a day or two. They've gotten COVID. It's usually an incidental finding. They're on minimal oxygen support and they get to go home after a couple days. Whereas our unvaccinated patients are much sicker. It's much harder on them and it's taking them much longer to show improvements and get to go home. Once they get to this point, there's not a whole lot of conversation to that we have about the vaccine other than regret. You know, I've not seen anyone in my care that has not had the vaccine who's still standing by their choice not to have the vaccine. Every one of them regret not having the vaccine. It's incredibly hard. You know, they knew that there was something they could do to prevent this and now it's too late. When our patients are in here and about to get put on a ventilator, they wish they'd gotten vaccinated. Um, and I would tell the community, please get vaccinated. Let's get this under control. I mean, it may never go away, but it doesn't have to be this bad. It wasn't nearly this bad. You know, you get the first surge. I felt like God was saying, here's your warning. This is coming. Here's your time. We developed this vaccine. Here's your time to get vaccinated, work up, you know, an immunity to this virus before it gets bad. And a lot of people ignored that. And we're losing so many people that we just don't have to, we shouldn't be losing. There's people dying up there that shouldn't be dying had they taken the, taken the help that we, that, you know, that had been developed. And that's what's hard. That's what's hard is there was, there, there could have been prevention to half of this or most of this. We're tired of COVID. <laughs> we're tired. We're all mentally, physically drained. We're tired. But we will keep fighting and we will be here for the community. We're just tired. <laughs>